Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to talk about the dirty property. What does it mean when a record is dirty? Before we get started today, if you haven't watched my invoicing video, go watch this first. This is the database we're going to be using for today's example. Okay, here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can download a copy off my website if you want to. You'll find a link down below. And if you open up any form, like here's me, right, and I make a change, put something in here, notice up here in that upper left-hand corner, that symbol changes to a pencil. See that? Little pencil guy right there. Now, what does that pencil mean? That means the record is dirty. That means you're in the process of editing it, changing the data, but that record has not been committed to the table yet. It hasn't been saved. So at this point, if I open up the customer table and look in here, my name is still Richard, not Richard AAA, because this record is dirty, right? The data just exists in the form in the computer's memory. It hasn't been saved to the table yet. Now, generally, this doesn't make that much of a difference, but it can cause some problems. For example, let's say you go to a new record and you type in Aaron Adams, okay? And you haven't saved the record yet, and you go to click on orders to create an order for Mr. Aaron Adams. All right, the order form opens up. And normally, if you watched my invoicing database, you know that this combo box gets the customer value from the open customer form. But if I drop this box down right now, look at that. These are sorted alphabetically. There's no Aaron Adams. Why? Because this record hasn't been committed to the table yet. It's still dirty. So it's not going to show up in any related forms. Combo boxes, list boxes, queries, reports, any of that stuff. What you have to make sure you do is save this record. Now, there's a lot of ways to save the record. You can move off of the record and back to it. You can click on refresh, and that'll refresh the record. That does a me.refresh if you're a VBA programmer. You can click on the save button. That'll also save the record. But your user shouldn't have to deal with all that, right? Because Access is supposed to just save stuff as you enter in records, okay? So how could we have the order form undirty or save this record before it opens up that order form? Well, it's just one line of code, one line, that's it. If you've never done any VBA programming, go watch this video first, it's about 20 minutes long, it teaches you everything you need to know to get started. VBA isn't scary, folks. All right, so where do we put that one line of code? Well, we go right-click, Design View, and in the Order button, let me move this out of the way. In the Order button, right-click, Build Event. Before we go and try to open that form, we're going to say me.refresh. Me is the form that you're currently on, which in this case is the customer form. It's going to say, save that record, commit it to the table, then go ahead and open up the order form where customer ID equals the current customer ID. All right, save that. Close it. Open up the customer form again. Now, let me go back over here. Let me delete Mr. Aaron Adams. Delete. He's gone. All right. Open it back up again. Now, let's add another new record. Aaron Apple, whatever. Okay. Now, before I save that record, I'm going to hit the order button. And look at that. He shows up here now. Why? Because this record was saved to the table first. Then this form opened up. And if you remember from the invoicing video, this combo box gets its default value from forms, customer F, customer ID. That's why if you're opening up a form or even a sub form and you're not seeing the right stuff in there, then you got to make sure you refresh the record of the form that you're leaving first. Now, this also shows up when you open up the invoice report. In fact, if you watched my invoicing video, you'll recall that I mentioned that when we built this button, right? There's the me.refresh right there. That way it refreshes the stuff on the invoice, on the order form first, then it opens up the order report. And if you don't do that and you got changes on your order form, they're not gonna show up in your report. That's that simple. If you wanna learn more about this dirty property, I cover it in more detail in my Access Expert classes, level one and level five, and then from the programming standpoint, Access Developer 19. I'll put links to these down below. As always, when I did my research for this video, I always Google to see what other people have to say about the topic. And uh, Mike Wolf over at No Longer Set's got a really cool article on the dirty property, and he's got some code and stuff like that for more advanced 
developers. So check it out. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And for my members, um, we'll do a little extended cut with this. Some cool extra tricks and tips I'm going to show you. I'll show you how to make an undo button that's only enabled when the record is dirty. So as soon as the record goes dirty, that button becomes enabled so you can click on it. But if not, if they haven't edited the record, they can't click on the undo button. We'll use the on dirty event for that. And then another popular thing that lots of people ask me is that they want to make it so that when their users change a record, Access will say, hey, you've changed this record. Are you sure you want to save the changes? Again, we'll check the dirty property to see if the record was changed before the user leaves it. And if so, it'll ask the user, hey, you made a change. You sure you want to save these changes? All right, that'll all be coming up in the extended cut for the members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos and gold members can download these databases. But that is your fast tip video for today. I hope you learned something. And I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.